This is what it's like having bangs. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome to the second part of my witchy bookshelf tour. This week I'm going to share with you all the books that I have about spell work and magic. If you haven't watched the first part, in the first part we talked about my Wicca and Witchcraft Basics books, so if you haven't watched that part I'll link it above. So if you've seen that one and you're ready to see more of my witchy books, let's get started. The first two books we're going to talk about today kind of go together. They are Everyday Sun Magic and Everyday Moon Magic. I like these especially for the Sabbaths and the Esbits, um, when we're celebrating the sun and the moon. These books are really great because really anything having to do with the sun, any kind of magic or spell work that you're trying to do involving the sun, there'll definitely be something about it in this book. There's lots of helpful references and resources in this book, a lot of really great incantations and prayers, prayers for different times of the year and different times of day having to do with the sun and having to do with the moon. So if your witchy practice is a little bit more sun-based, maybe pick this one up. And if your witchy practice is a little more moon-based, then pick this one up. Um, I do lots of sun and lots of moon magic, so I have both. But they really are exactly what they say, spells and rituals for either sun magic or moon magic. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I have a lot of Scott Cunningham books. So this next one is a Scott Cunningham book. It's the Encyclopedia of Crystal Gem and Metal Magic. This book is, again, exactly what it says it is. It's great for if you're into crystal gem and metal magic. And if you haven't gotten into it, this book is a great starter guide. It's great because it talks about everything having to do with stones, metal. It talks about how to charge your stones, how to cleanse your stones. It talks about every single different crystal and gives you the properties of that crystal, what it's good for, how to take care of it, because there are certain crystals that can't be in water or can't be in direct sunlight. So this book has all that type of information. This book is just overall really great if you're involved with crystals or gems or any kind of stone magic at all. And if you haven't gotten into it, this is a great beginner's book too. This book is also really great because it also talks about how to go about getting your stones ethically and intelligently, because tiny PSA, there are people selling crystals and gems and things like that that are fake so you do have to be careful when you're buying crystals so this book kind of talks about that as well and of course talks about the different things that you can do with your crystals it even gets into tarot in relation to crystals and the zodiac in relation to crystals so really if you are involved in crystals at all this book is definitely a must-have these next two books also go together both these books are by the same two people the first one is Practical Elemental Magic, and this book is just all about working with the elements in your magical practice. So this book really just goes through each of the four elements and really breaks it down, and it even talks about elemental beings such as fairies. It talks about the different tools of magic and ritual and the elements that they correspond to. It really just talks about everything having to do with elements and magic. So if you're trying to get more in tune with the elements in your magical practice, or if you're just starting out and you're trying to understand how the elements play into your magic ritual and spell work, then this book is really, really great. And the next one that kind of goes along with it, it's by the same two people, is Practical Planetary Magic. So similar to the last one, just instead of discussing the elements, we're going to be discussing the planets. So if you are the type of witch that is into planets or stars or works a lot with sky and night then this book is really really great it's got different meditations for each planet it goes through each planet and really explains everything you need to know about that planet for working with that planet during your magic and ritual it even talks about the spirits connected with each planet gives you symbols and sigils for each planet really just gives you everything that you need to work with the planets in your magical practice the next book is protection and reversal magic this book is a must-have, in my opinion. If you are a Wiccan or a witch or anybody who does any kind of spiritual work, you need to know how to protect yourself and guard yourself. Because no matter what type of magic or ritual you're doing, you have to know how to protect yourself. 
Um, and this book is great for that. This book is also great for if you're someone who does hexes and does curses. This is great for reversal magic. This book even gets into deities for protection and spirit guides. It talks about how to protect your home, how to protect your being, how to protect yourself during magic and following magic. It talks about cleansings. It talks even about omens and warnings and signs. So if you are practicing any kind of magic, whether it's light magic, dark, ma dark magic, personal magic, sorcery, sacred magic, Magic, no matter what kind of magic or ritual you're doing, definitely have some kind of book like this. Even if it's not this, just have some kind of book that you can go to if you're feeling like you need some help protecting yourself or if you need to reverse something that you've done. The next book is The Elements of Spellcrafting. This book is great for if you've been practicing for a while and you want to enhance your practice. This book goes through a bunch of different ways to make your spell work more successful. And it really breaks everything down in a really interesting and unique way. It talks about the timing of your magic and why some timing is better than other timing. It talks about the way you live your life and the way that can impact your spell and ritual. It talks about actually understanding magic and how having a deep understanding of magic helps your magic to work. Um, it really just talks about everything that you never even thought you needed to know to enhance your spell work. So this one's really great if you're someone who does spells and does ritual and you want to make sure that you're getting the most out of your ritual and spell work. This book is also, in my opinion, really, really great if you're just starting out and you're trying to figure out what type of magic you want to do, because this book will help you get an understanding of how different types of magic will impact your life and impact your energies. And that can help you decide which things you want to be a part of and which things you kind of want to have nothing to do with. <laughs> this next book is by the same author. It's called The Sorcerer's Secrets, Strategies in Practical Magic. So this one's similar to the last one in that it's going to help you enhance your magical practice. But this one's a little bit different because whereas the elements of spellcrafting is going to kind of in list format give you different ways to overall in general enhance your spiritual practice. This book, The Sorcerer's Secrets, is going to go through different specific spells and types of spells and types of magic and tell you how to enhance those. So it talks about divination and how to enhance your divination practice. It talks about your regular everyday practice and how to enhance that. It goes into financial and success magic, prosperity magic, and how to enhance those practices. It talks about protection spells. It talks about how to enhance healing work. So this one is more of a specific guide for all the different types of magic and types of spell work. And then the elements of spellcrafting is much more just a generalized list of ways that you can enhance your entire practice across the board. So I think both are good to have because they kind of complete each other. The next book is a little book of pendulum magic. So if you are just starting out with your pendulum and you've never used it before and you don't know what to do, this book is great for that. If you're looking to change up the things that you do with your pendulum and you just want to get more into it, this book is great for that too. I like this book because if you've been using your pendulum for kind of basic yes or no readings, um, this book really helps to walk you through how to get more into all the different things that you can do with your pendulum, like dousing and scrying. And it even gives you different charts to use for with your pendulum to see what answers you're getting. And I think a lot of the time with pendulums, people can think that you can just kind of do one thing with them or you can just do yes or no answers with them. But there is a lot you can do with pendulums. So this book is really great for expanding your horizon with your pendulum magic. The next book is something that I've had since I started when I was just a little baby witch when I was a teenager um, and it's Candle Magic for Beginners. Um, I've kept it simply because I think Candle Magic is a really easy, simple, straightforward form of magic that packs a lot of power in it. And it even says on this book, the simplest magic you can do. Um, candle magic is so straightforward. And so if you're just starting out with witchcraft, just get yourself a couple candles and do some candle magic. Um, I still do candle magic. I just, I have a strong connection with the element of fire. So I do candle magic for that reason. But also candle magic is just really convenient and easy. And honestly, I think it's pretty powerful. You don't always need a lot of bells and whistles and a lot of fanfare for your spell work to be powerful and meaningful. So this book is really great if you've never done any kind of magic or spell work before. 
It's really great if you've never done any candle magic. It's good if you've even done some candle magic and you just want to really know the basics and you want to have more candle spells that you know of. And this book is really great because it talks about everything from preparing for candle magic, like preparing the candle itself, um, to the timing of your, your candle magic. It talks about numerology and the correspondences of different colors with different candles. And then it also goes through all the different types of spell work that you can do with candle magic. So I've kept it for that reason, even though it is technically a beginner book. I mean, you're never not a beginner, really. You're never going to master spirituality. So I feel like it's good to have whether you're a beginner or not. The next book is Herbal Magic, a guide to herbal enchantments, folklore, and divination. This book has all the correspondences of different herbs, talks about which herbs are lucky, unlucky, which herbs are good for this, which herbs are good for that. It gives you all different kinds of spells that involve herbs. It just really is overall a really great book for if you are trying to involve herbs in your spell work more. And the next book is Spell Crafts again by Scott Cunningham. So this book is all about creating objects with magical power, magical crafts in a sense. It talks about everything from the obvious magical tools like creating mirrors, creating besoms or brooms. It'll tell you everything you need to know to create that item and how to get the materials that you need and how to put it all together and then what that item is best used for. I also think this book is really great when it comes to celebrating the Sabbaths because with a lot of Sabbaths, especially if you are a Wiccan with kids, it can be fun to make something in honor of the Sabbath and there are many Sabbaths that go along with certain objects such as on Samhain you could use this book to help you create a broom or a besom. So seasonally based on whatever materials you have you can grab this book and see which items can I make based off of what seasonally the earth is doing right now. So those are all the books that I have to share with you all today. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope that you found them interesting. If you guys have any books about spell work and ritual work that you guys wanna share, leave them in the comments down below. Stay tuned for part three, four or five and probably six of my witchy bookshelf tour because it's a big bookshelf, I'm a hoarder. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe so you never miss future videos. I upload every single week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next week. Bye.